In the last video, we had these two radio control buggies in front of us talking about gear pitch. And in that video, we said we were going to talk about 3D printing in the next video. So that's what we're doing in this video. We're going to talk about how 3D printing has affected the RC world or hobby. Now, the first reason I would say it's affected the radio control hobby is because we are able to replace parts that are either difficult to find um, sourcing online or at your local hobby shop or also discontinued in total. So that was the case with this radio controlled Afna buggy. So Afna is no longer part of the North American. You can't buy it in North America anymore. It's now replaced by Hobeo, which is the original company who ended up selling to Afna. This, we're gonna be talking about that very shortly here. And in this case, I was not able to find the part on the very front end. So it ended up connecting to the differential case and it supports the two pins on the lower control arms. So the front one and the rear one. I was unable to find these parts in store online. And if I did, it was just a lot of money or it was just, it was very difficult to bring across the border and into Canada. So what I ended up doing instead is 3D printing those pieces. It probably took me about an hour to design one. The one on the front and the one on the rear are identical, I'm quite certain. Yep. So they're quite, they're identical on the front and the rear. And I ended up spending maybe less than four hours printing both of them. I think it took two hours each to print it um, on the printer. And I do use a MakerBot fifth gen 3D printer. We'll see that somewhere in the video. And that's how I was able to solve my problem with this car. So back if I were to look maybe 10, 15, 20 years ago, I was unable to, if I couldn't find parts online or if I couldn't find them in my local hobby shop, I would essentially be, I would, I would have this radio control vehicle that was essentially garbage to me. I wouldn't be able to um, find a way to produce these intricate parts. Uh, 3D printing allows us to do that. Now let's jump into the second reason why I believe 3D printing has affected the RC hobby. Um, the second reason is it's replacing parts that design is maybe not fully optimized. And maybe you think that there's better, there's a better design to suit the application, or maybe you're looking for additional features that it didn't come with. That's the case with my um, Hobeo. So this it was formerly called in North America Afna when Afna brought these in. However, now it's I purchased this through Tower Hobbies and it was known as the Hobeo and it still is. So this, this radio control vehicle, the radio box was this black tub and the black tub you'd have two screws that drop into it in order to seal it off. And that to me was difficult to get in and out of. So I do want access to my radio box. I do like to have it my radio box on these pins. So it's the slider pins, it's like the body pins that we use. And also, I have a radio that's relatively large. Um, it's a spectrum receiver that goes in here, and it was a little bit too big in order to fit into the stock radio box. So what I ended up doing is I solved the problem that I had, you know, and I don't blame the manufacturer Hobeo for this. This is just my specific um, situation and case. I prefer it to be this way and I have a printer so why not? I can do um, as I wish. So I ended up printing off that part and it's a combination between the receiver and also the servo itself. So the servo is held in here. The part is actually more solid than it was when it was the stock original part and also I'm able to get my receiver in there and also the lid of it is now able to come off very quickly. It just has a lock in. I, see, I can see if I'm able to pull it off here. I pull the pin out and then I'm able to open it up. So that's how I'm able to get the receiver box off now. It's that quick. Um, and there of course is the receiver. So I'll leave that right there. That's the second reason why I believe 3D printing has changed the RC hobby. If there's a part that is not fully up to the features that I want to um, have within my RC radio control vehicles, I'm able to print that part off and then serve the applications that I'm hoping that it can um, accomplish. Something like the feature specific. Uh, let's jump into the third reason. And I believe the third reason and fourth reason are somewhat the same. However, I have to mention both of them anyway as separate entities. So the third reason I would say that 3D printing has changed our RC hobby is because we're able to almost like rapid prototype um, in order to solve a problem. So that's very that's very good to me to have. Something that I come up with an idea and I want to see if it's possible. I run it through the printer after designing it and then I come out with um, something that works. So that's the case with this um, tr uh, Latrax from Traxxas Teton. 
So I ended up taking um, a design that I had. I probably had the idea at about eight o'clock. By nine o'clock, I started designing it in 3D software and I came up with these rims. So what the whole idea with these was to be like a carpet drifter. So that was the idea. Uh, instead of going and purchasing um, new radio controlled rims for this vehicle, I ended up deciding to print it. Why? Because I'm able to, at eight o'clock to nine o'clock, um, think of something I want to do, nine o'clock start the design, and by 10 o'clock it's complete, and I'm printing it overnight, and by the morning I have every all my parts. So if I really wanted to go to the store, I'd have to wait till the next day, and I'd have to purchase them, and I probably ended up printing all of these parts, these four rims and tires, I probably printed these for less than a couple dollars. Um, same thing with the these other boxes, it's probably just a few dollars that make up each one of these components. Um, the 3D printing material goes a long way depending on how you design and how you optimize the parts that you do design. So that's the third reason of how I was able to um, optimize or utilize my 3D printer to solve a problem within the RC world. So let's jump to the fourth one. So the fourth one is um, something a little bit more interesting. I kind of tie it into the third reason that we have. And the fourth one is really just experimentation. So it is kind of like a rapid prototyping, but it did take a considerable amount of time. I was really experimenting. It's something new. I want to see if it's it's uh, going to be possible to do this. So what I ended up doing is we saw a video within maybe maybe three or four videos ago. I can't remember. It's of the radio controlled airplane that I ended up uh, making out of the foam board. It's the flight test version. It's a modified version. It's smaller. And the whole reason why I ended up starting that is because of this idea. I wanted to put a 3D printed wing on that plane and I didn't want to have a very large wing to, um, to do that. So what I ended up doing is coming up with the design. The design consists of six pieces that is printed. So this is your first section. Your second section is here, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth. Then I have these two other pieces in addition to that which makes up the aileron. I ended up printing even um, the hinge holes within the material and then what I do is I just insert a dowel. I didn't want to have the 3D printed material act as the dowel. I want to make sure that this is not going to be a failure point and I know the dowel is relatively small. So instead of printing it I just cut a piece of dowel like it's a barbecue skewer and I threw it into this wing. So this is like the, the fourth reason I would say that 3D printing has affected our RC world. We're able to do something that is um, different than in the past you know I was never able to come up with some precise shape that I wanted and then printed it and of course this one uses some um, not really standard way of producing a wing I got these cross ribs in here rather than just straight uh, again it's just experimentation what works what doesn't I'm really excited I can't wait to get this thing in the air to see if I'm able to crash it or not um, I do feel like it is much heavier than I expected it to be. I didn't plan on it for being this this heavy. Um, I was off by, I think it was about 25% of what I thought the orig original weight was going to be of it. So I don't know how it's going to act in the air. I don't know if I'm going to have um, everything that I need to do in order to fly this properly. But you know what? That's the fun of it. Let's see if I'm able to crash it. Um, crashing it, it's fine. I can just make another one, right? That's why 3D printing is good. So I, I would say... The other thing that is important for this wing is I didn't want to 3D print the covering. I could have done that too, um, but if I do that, I lose the ability to see what's inside and I can't see it the way that I wanted to. So what I ended up doing is just sheeting it with clear packing tape. And that completes it for the fourth reason, I believe, 3D printing has affected our RC world. Now, if you're looking for more videos on radio controlled uh, vehicles or calculators, please subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in the next video.